Welcome back to Brick by Brick. Today we're going to be going through some LEGO Star Wars sets that have recently been released. It is important to remember that because these sets are about to be released or have re recently been released, that they are not going to be retired for quite a while, so it's important to keep that in mind. It's generally better to buy sets closer to the retirement date, uh, but for now we're just going to be kind of looking into the future to see a couple LEGO sets that might be good investments in like a year or two. So we'll start off with the Dark Falcon set. So this one I didn't originally didn't think was going to do too well. Uh, you guys have some comments for me and I think that they were totally fair enough. It does have a lot of pretty cool exclusive minifigures and that's generally a good driving force behind the value of a Lego set so I do think that uh, this one will probably end up doing all right mainly because of the great minifigures in the set. You get a lot of exclusive figures there so pretty good there. And uh, then we get to a C-3PO build. I have a similar version of this except for Yoda. It's just a giant buildable statue of uh, Yoda, or in this case C-3PO, and it comes with the display piece of kind of the information card, as well as a minifigure version of C-3PO, and uh, this set could do well. My giant Yoda statue has done pretty well as a LEGO investment, so it could likely do the same. Then we get to the TIE Fighter and X-Wing mashup set. Uh, so this one, I probably wouldn't invest too much in it, but it might do well. It's got uh, the, of course, the TIE Fighter and then the X-Wing, as well as it looks like four minifigures and a little droid there, the red and yellow droid. So this set could do well, but I probably wouldn't invest in it at the moment. Uh, and then we get to the, well, we'll skip that one. Uh, we get to the Captain Rex Y-Wing Microfighter set. So this one, this one has been in high demand. So if you're able to get one of these, especially on sale, I would definitely recommend it. I think this Microfighter, even though LEGO increased the price of it, is probably going to do pretty well as a LEGO investment. People love to collect the Captain Rex minifigure there, which is the main driving force behind the value of the set. So it could very well end up doing a very well as a LEGO investment. Then we get to the Ambush on Mandalore set. So this one is Lego Star Wars Battle Pack. I would probably steer clear of this one. It might do well. Uh, generally, the Lego Mandalorian sets and other kind of sets like it haven't done as well as I'd hoped. And I, it's possible that trend doesn't continue with this one, but I have a feeling it would. Then we get to another little Battle Pack set thing. Uh, this one I probably would steer clear of too. Another Mandalorian, it looks like, set. So I probably wouldn't recommend it. Then we get to the Clone Clone Commander Cody set. I think this will probably do well as a Lego Brickhead. It's pretty inexpensive too, so if you want to get a few of them for your collection, it could do pretty well. And then we get to the Clone Trooper and Battle Droid Battle Pack. So this one, generally Lego Star Wars Battle Packs and it performing quite, quite well. And I could uh, definitely see that trend continuing with this one. It's got lots of great droids figures as well as some great Clone Trooper figures as it is a battle pack for both of those. Uh, so this one could do pretty great. It's generally, like I mentioned, Star Wars Battle Packs perform pretty well, and especially if they have a lot of clone troopers in them, people love to collect the army building of those, so it could do well as a LEGO investment. Then we get to this uh, next set right here, the, the famous scene of boarding the, the spaceship, and uh, this one is $55. It's got, looks like, uh, an exclusive minifigure there with, for the 25th anniversary. The 20th anniversary sets that I have in my collection, all of them have ended up doing quite well. I've sold off probably the majority of them, but I still have a few that are worth quite a bit and have done quite well. Uh, next up, we get to the Ahsoka's, Tana, Ahsoka's Duel on, I'm not sure, uh, Peridia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it uh, it looks like an interesting set. I've heard many people say it's a little bit overpriced. It doesn't look like you get too much, not a lot of pieces. You do get some cool minifigures, though. For a $55 set, you get five minifigures, which isn't too bad, uh, but not a lot of pieces, which is unfortunate. And then we get to the Darth Maul Sith Infiltrator. The set is a little... Um, a little more reasonable of a Lego investment. I think it would probably do better than the previous set, uh, just because it's a relatively famous ship from the Star Wars franchise. Comes with great minifigures in it too. You get a couple of great options there. Then we get to this set right here. So this is the Desert Skiff and Sarlacc Pit. I think this could very well be a pretty great investment. It's got the exclusive minifigure there for the 25th anniversary line, as well as it depicts a very famous scene from the Star Wars movies and uh, it's got some great minifigures in it. I can't quite tell exactly how many, but it looks like you get about four or like um, five or six minifigures there, so pretty good um, value there, It's and it's $80. You don't get a ton of pieces, which is unfortunate, but it does look like there's some bigger pieces in there, so that will make up for some of the price. 
Then we get to the AT-80. This is the, I believe it's the Ultimate Collector Series Edition. This one is quite expensive, but if you're able to get it on sale, it might be good to get one of them for your collection, depending on how large the collection is, but it could do well. Then we get to the Venerator Class Republic Attack Cruiser. This one I probably won't be investing in just because it's because of the uh, pretty hefty price tag, but I do think that it will probably end up doing pretty well. Same story for this uh, Star Destroyer set here. Then we get to a Millennium Falcon set. Generally, Millennium Falcon sets end up doing pretty well after they've uh, retired and been on the retired Lego market for a while, so that could be the case with this one. Then we get to the TIE Interceptor set. So this one is got uh, it's a relatively inexpensive set for a display piece. It looks like it's uh, geared towards more adult fans of Lego, so that could mean it will probably do well as a Lego investment. Generally, that's the case, and it is still a little pricey, but at $230, it's reasonable. You get quite a few pieces, and it's uh, definitely a 18 plus set, so meant for more adult fans of Lego. And uh, those have been, uh, we'll just go through those first page of Lego Star Wars sets, but feel free to let me know if you have any questions, and uh, let, let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, bye.